I removed the chassis from the RCA CTC28 so I can start replacing the caps. First thing I did was to take all the knobs off and on this model the UHF knob has a thing that won't let it come off and this is so the front panel can be removed easily to change the dial lamps. Other RCA models like this one I don't think have that feature. You just gotta completely remove the tuner from the set in order to change the dial lamps. I removed all the knobs from the front and then removed all the screws from the bottom so I can get the chassis up off here. I removed the HV anode connector and I didn't worry about discharging it because I know this set hasn't been used in a long time but if a set has been used uh, relatively recently it's, it's always a good idea to discharge the HV anode connector to the CRT shield before trying to remove it. So I removed that. I removed the convergence plug and the yoke plug. I removed the picture tube socket. And there's a screw here that holds the auxiliary control panel in place. There are four screws that hold the tuner in place. And you don't have to remove them to remove the tuner unit. You just loosen them. There's these ones down here at the bottom of the tuner. You can see. And there's one over here to the left of the VHF tuner one at the top near the brightness control and unfortunately RCA never thought to put con uh, plugs between the chassis and the tuner so the tuner has got to be completely removed from the set there's a tuner mounting bracket here which can be used to uh, hold the tuner onto the chassis while transporting it and I did find the degaussing through Mr. Disc it's cracked so I think I may just cheat a little and just wire this set up to not have a degausser anymore and I'll just degauss it manually doesn't bother me to do that and you really only need to degauss it if it's moved because the earth's magnetic field uh, affects the purity affects the magnetic properties of the of the uh, picture tube and if you move it across the Earth's magnetic field, that's when it can change. So, I, I, don't, I don't think I'll bother with trying to get the degausser to work. Uh, uh, it's ju it just goes in series with the high voltage leads or for, with the leads going into the rectifier. So I just consult the RCA service manual to see what to do about that. So now that I've got everything uh, disconnected, I'll take the tuner out and we'll remove the chassis. Here's how the tuner unit mounts onto the chassis for uh, transporting it in the service position. You notice on the side of the tuner unit are two little tabs and there are two tabs on the chassis so you just put it on the tabs and slide it and then this bolt connects to this uh, mounting brace here so I'll do that so we can transport this down to the workshop. I think one other thing I'll do is convert this power switch here to a relay system so that we don't have high current AC flowing through this switch. I know on some sets there have been cases of fires by the high current it takes to run this set causing carbonization inside the switch. So to take the heavy load off of that switch itself I'm going to try using a relay on it. So I'm going to assemble it and we'll take this down to the workshop and take a look at it. Here's the flyback. I was hoping for a replacement flyback in here when I saw that there was new insulation going to the HV uh, rectifier filament and the focus rectifier filament. This may be a replacement, but I think it, it may be an RCA exact replacement. Looks like there's a little bit of deformation on the high voltage coil there. But hopefully it'll still be okay. There's the 3A3 tube. And this the 3A3 just fits into the top of the flyback when you put the cover down. Now here's the RCA CTC28 chassis back at the workshop.
going to order the caps. I'm going to make a note of what the cap values are. I'm getting all new electrolytics in it. And I've got the original service manual. I got all these RCA manuals from Matt S78MN. So I'll be able to use this uh, to help in uh, repairing the CTC28 chassis.